and welcome to another episode of Foo Bar. Today we are continuing in the series on how to build a multi-region serverless application. And we are going deep into data, how you can replicate data. This video is part of a series on architecting multi-region serverless application. In the previous video, that was the first one on this series, we talk about why and why not to do this type of applications and some considerations. In this video and in the following videos, we are going to address some of the challenges when architecting this type of applications. We are going in this video into data, then we are going into events, and later on we are going into secrets and user data. So stay tuned for all the videos that are coming and subscribe to this channel for more. So if you think about multi-region and with infrastructure as code and with serverless applications, the biggest challenge of all is data. It can be in the forms of databases, it can be in the form of objects, it can be in the form of events, or it can be in the form of secrets. All of this needs to be replicated in other regions in order for your infrastructure to work and to your application to continue working as before. So I want to deep dive on databases. I want to deep dive on architecture patterns to keep the consistency of your data in a multi-region application. When we talk about consistency, that's a very important thing because now our application is distributed all around the world. So the latency might impact the consistency of our application. We might get the wrong data back. So we need to address that. And that can be resolved with three architectural patterns that I'm going to describe today. These are not related to AWS. In a following video, I will show you a demo, but these are just software engineer practices. So let's start with the first pattern. The first pattern is called read local, write globally. This is the easiest pattern to implement. This is like the easiest pattern to apply if you can. This pattern means that you read from all your regions and you write only to one region. So in the case of uh, having these databases, they will be synchronized. You will have a primary database and read replicas all around. Then your users, for example, in San Francisco, we have uh, West uh, 2, I think it's Oregon, um, basically will read from that database, from that region, and your users in Taipei will uh, read from your Asia region. That's good. They are both read, one read replica, one primary database. That's good. Very small latency for reading. The thing is when writing comes, then your users in San Francisco will write to the primary database in Oregon, while your users in Taipei will write to Oregon as well. This is great and this works very well for your active active solution and even for your disaster recovery solution. For your latency solutions uh, and your strategies, here you need to have a consideration. When you read, the read is local, it's very fast, but the writes add latency. So if in a scenario where you don't have that many writes, this can work very well for your latency needs. So, for example, if you are doing, um, I don't know, a login or something like that, where you are writing once when you create the user and when you change the password or something like that, there's very small amount of writes, but you're reading constantly because um, you're checking the valid session, you're checking the permissions, you're checking, you're checking, you're checking all the time. This is a great solution. But if you have a scenario where there is too many writes, uh, compared to the amount of reads, then the user will get the latency and that will impact their quality of work. If you need to do more writes, then the second pattern might be wood for you. The second one is read local and write partition. Here we are reading locally like before, we have our read replicas, but then the writing will happen in the user uh, kind of primary location. So here we'll have our user to be uh, to have a home and then that user will uh, write wherever is called home. So in the case of our uh, type by user, 
it's going to read and write from Asia database. But then if our Taipei user moves to another country or flies or travels or whatever, for example, now it's in LA, now it's going to read from the Oregon region, but it's still going to write in uh, Asia region. And this is because um, the application is handling where these users are writing. So that's something you need to implement manually in your applications in order to decide, okay, this user is in Taipei, is going to write into Taipei, and that's something you need to implement yourself. This adds a more complexity in your application, but it makes your life easier when it comes to race conditions and collisions of the data, because you have everything unified in one place. Your data is partitioned, your data is shared based on the user location. This strategy is not only about user location, you can play with different things. For example, I heard a story of a customer that was creating um, like a fantasy game application. And they have different types of games there. They have American football and they have cricket. So whenever a user created a new cricket fantasy game, it was automatically created in the Mumbai region because the chances that that user is from India are very high. While uh, if the user was creating an American football thing, it was automatically created in some US region. And in this way, the data was partitioned by the application automatically. So that's another way of doing this pattern. You want to avoid collisions at any time. Data collision and race conditions make a lot of pain in your application and solving them becomes very complicated. And there is where we come to pattern number three. And this, I don't know if it's a pattern of, or an anti-pattern, but I will call it a pattern because you will see it later. I will be using this a lot, but we call it the read local and write local solution. Here, everybody reads and writes in their own region. And for that, you need to have a database that is a multi-master or multi-primary, and it's available to take reads and writes in all the replicas. This is when you need to have writes and reads, and you don't have a choice to support latency. Here, latency is minimal, and everything is in the same table or database. Here, a good consideration is that the data usually doesn't get um, written in different regions at the same time, but sometimes you cannot avoid that. So that's something you need to have in mind. So in this case, the users in San Francisco will read from Oregon and the users in Taipei will uh, read from uh, Asia South is one. And then they both write to the database and we have a collision because the collision here is where the latency comes into place. And believe me, if you're thinking that this will never happen to you, this will happen the second you start doing this to you, if you don't do it carefully. So now both users write the same object into the database. And when the data kind of uh, sync, we have a collision. Here is your application that needs to define which one is the latest uh, item to get uh, this collision like resolved because you only can write one element. It's the last one, which one it is. So that's your application that needs to define it. So, mm. so now after learning these three patterns, let's see what AWS services have to offer us to make our life easier. Um, I will show you two solutions only two. Uh, I imagine there might be more, but I will want to show you the most managed solutions that I could find. Uh, if you have others, let me know in the comments. If there are others you would like me to explore, let me know in the comments. If for some of these solutions you would like a bigger demo, let me know in the comments because I will not show you a demo now. I will show it later in this series. So the first solution is the Amazon Aurora Global Databases. And the second one is Dynamo Global Tables. So First one, if you don't know Aurora, Aurora is our uh, relational database management system. It's built in RDS, it supports MySQL and PostgreSQL, and it's a database built for the cloud. Basically, your compute and your storage are separated, so you can scale this database 
incredulously, it performs very well, and it has this kind of option of the global database. I will not do more on Aurora now because, well, this is not an Aurora video, but if you want one, let me know. So basically the idea with um, global database is that you have um, the solution that is built for distributed applications, globally distributed applications, allowing you to have this idea of one primary database and as many read replicas as you want in the different regions. So here you can, um, create your primary database, and then everything will get replicated within one second into other regions. So you write once, you write in this um, global, basically, uh, as we had in the first pattern, and then you read locally. So this is the solution for the first pattern. You write global, you read locally. And with this implementation, it's pretty straightforward. So you will define your primary region, you are going to the writes there, then you will create secondary regions with read replicas where you are going to do your reads and everything will sync within one second. Boom, something exploded, you need to fail over, and now how you fail over? Well, you uh, just tell Aurora to fail over and that's the system is designed for that. It will, in less than a minute, change the uh, primary region to be something else. And then that will be the right database and everything else will become a RAID replica. And that's done by the system. So this is good. The second solution is uh, Dynamo Global Tables. This is a multi-master or multi-primary multi-region database fully managed by AWS. So this is the third pattern where we have these two uh, write local and read local. Well, you can do this with Dynamo. Basically, when you create a table, you can decide if it's a standard table or it's a global table. If you define it as a global table, then you can decide in how many regions you want to replicate it. And then data will be replicated all around the world automatically. And you can write anywhere in the world and the data will replicate around the world automatically. So this becomes a little bit more complicated and collisions will happen and things will explode, but this is so easy to set up. So Dynamo, how it addressed this consistency issue when you have a collision? Well, it has a strategy that is the last writer wins. So basically the last one to put their right will win. So you don't need to handle that. <laughs> But basically, in that way, you can have a super easy multi-region solution. And that's the video for me today. I hope you like this type of videos where I go more in depth in architecture software uh, patterns. And in the following video, I will show you the demo for Dynamo. And I will show you a little bit on how it can work in a multi-region environment, how you can create this tables, how you can use them. Um, yeah, I will go in there. And then in the videos upcoming in this series, we will go into the events um, replication. We will go into the uh, secrets and user data replication. So that's all for me. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And I see you in another episode of Fuba. Ciao, ciao.